Hey, good evening, everybody. So, in this video, um, I'm going to continue the series, and I do believe that this video is going to finalize it, um, this particular series. Now, this one's going to be on the uh, on the Gospel of the Kingdom um, versus the Gospel, and uh, the leverage that can be used for children for either good or bad. Um, so... Let's think about let, let, let's let's go through the uh, the aspect of children first. Now, children are easily influenced, um, and whoever gets a hold of them, whether it be Satan's agenda or whether it be God's agenda, is the likely direction that that kid's going to be going to. So Satan's going to be um, his tactic is going to be to brainwash them, right? To, to put stuff in their mind so that so that they won't be ready for what's coming, right? Um, what we need to be doing is we need to be training our children to be warriors for Christ. We need to be training them to think like martyrs, you know? I mean, um, we, we need to really be training them on, um, on how to react with situations like this. Like, for example, one of the things that Saudi was talking about in one of his videos was um, uh, he was pastoring a church and he um, decided to allow a Halloween gathering um, to take place, you know, with like uh, with puppet shows and um, prizes and you know all all the all the fun stuff that you would do that you'd take your kid, you know, um, instead of dress him up as a um, you know as a demon or whatever. Um, I don't know why. I'm not even going to go into that. Um, but but dr dressing him up um, for, for, for Halloween, um, you know, the, an alternative is, oh, well, let's just take him to church, you know. We'll take him to church and um, and we'll go and have some fun there and it'll be safe, um, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the thinking that Sadhu had. So he signed off on all of it and said, yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Um, go ahead, you know, bring in the dunk tank. Bring in the puppet show. Bring, bring, bring in the food and the goodies and you know and all this stuff. Bring it all in. Bring it, bring it, bring it in. Um, and uh, and so the parents were there. The kids were there. They were all having a great time. And Jesus spoke to Sadhu. And or it, it was either an angel or Jesus. I think it was an angel. An angel was just. Um, asking him uh, if he sees something wrong with what's going on. He's like, no, you know, this is our tradition. We, 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 we have this every year. Um, and, and we do this for the kids. And he's like, and he started getting a little bit fearful because he was, you know, he was just like, I don't know what could possibly be wrong here. And so what happened was the angel told him that these kids are being entertained. They're not being taught. Now, it's obviously, of course, okay to entertain the kids and stuff, but it's more important to equip them with, uh, with understanding the Lord's power. Now, now this is what happened. So Saudi said, okay, um, I'm I'm sorry. I'll I'll I'll. What, what can I do to change this? So he was told he had to go up in front, address the parents, and say, "I'm sorry, parents. Um, I made a huge mistake. It's not my staff's problem. It was my problem because I signed off on it. And um, we're 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 not doing this party thing anymore. What we're gonna do now is he had he had all the kids line up, um, or all, all the kids who knew how to speak in tongues." to step forward and go into a line and and they were they were cheering they, they, they were they were really happy about that and um all the other kids were to um form another line um in front of the other kids and and the kids that had the ability to speak in tongues um were to lay hands on the other kids and impart the gift of tongues speaking in tongues to these other kids and when that happened all of them broke out in unknown tongues, speaking in tongues. Absolutely awesome. And the glory of God filled that place. That's a party. It's 
fun to have puppet shows and stuff, but when God is serious about training the children, about training the kids in righteousness, um, this is a better option to do. A much better option to do. Um, okay, so I'm going to get off of that. That's that. That's very important. Um, so, yeah, God doesn't want us to entertain the children. He wants us to instead equip them to be ready for these last days as warriors. We 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 we're out of time. We we don't have that much time to prepare them anymore. We need to really get on that. Um, so, um. One of the aspects about, um, oh, hold on a minute. So simultaneously, there's going to be darkness and there's going to be glory with what's going on. Um, now that doesn't make any sense, right? How, how, how can you have darkness and light at the same time? You see that light on right there? Is there darkness anywhere around there? No. But if I turn the light off, the darkness comes. Right? And there's the darkness, and if I turn the light on, guess what happens? The darkness goes away. So they can't be there at the same time, can they? Is it scriptural? Is it possible? Well, in Exodus 14, 19 through 20, the pillar of fire is spoken of. Um, on one side there was darkness, and on the other side there was light. Um, in Amos 5:20, it says, There will be great darkness all over the world in the last days which is uh, spiritual darkness um, uh, that equates out to sin. Um, and and if you look, um, if you look at that darkness, if you look at that darkness, see, imagine that you can see the entire world topographically. And you see all these people, you see non-believers and believers and um some some that are strong Christians and others that are not, right? Um, others that are not strong Christians. And then we have the non-believers. Um, the other thing that we can't see, now I think I mentioned this in another video, but it's important to mention it again. Because when we look at, when we look in today's society about offending people and, and the whole thing about um, loving others and accepting them as they are and everything, um, when we look through the perspective of God's eyes, and when God looks down at people, he sees, he sees different levels of righteousness and different levels of sin. And, like, if somebody is in sin and they raise their hands up to God when they're worshiping, there's spiritual blood on their hands, and it's detestable to God. God, that's why God says, like, for example, for forgiveness, you know, um, if you don't, if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. So if you have a gift, raising your hands to offer God, um, leave it there at the altar. Don't offer it. Um, go and be reconciled to your brother. Get, get your forgiveness. Give, give your forgiveness and get your forgiveness, if at all possible. And then come back to God and raise your hands up. And you, your hands won't have blood, spiritual blood on them. And he'll accept that as um, as a pleasing. It'll be a pleasing fragrance to him. He loves that. Kid. So, so yeah. So, so God looks at the over the um, at the topographical view of um, the the sin that is in people's lives. Okay. Now, um, wow, this is getting to be a long video already. So I think what I'm going to need to do, um, I think I'm just going to have to end this video and um, continue the gospel of the kingdom in the next one. Um, so grace and peace.